Hello guys, and welcome to Watch Talk Wednesday. My name is Josh, I'm your host for the show, and today we have quite a bit of news. Uh, we actually have six stories to bring to you today. The first one is about the Apple Watch 2, or the Apple Watch Series 2, I guess is what they are calling it. So this watch uh, is a smart watch, as you know, and, you know, kind of our motif on the channel is all focused on mechanical watches. So you may be asking yourself, why am I talking about a smartwatch? Well, actually, in Apple's announcement for the watch, um, which is waterproof and it has onboard GPS, a whole bunch of really cool and interesting features for those people that want a fitness tracker or a smartwatch of a similar nature. Um, but back to what I was saying, uh, actually, in their announcement video, they said that by revenue, Apple is now the second largest watch seller right behind Rolex. And uh, it seems like the theme of their presentation was they're actually going to try and beat Rolex in terms of actual revenue generated from watch sales. Now, I read a really interesting article, uh, I think it's on uh, Worn and Wound, yikes. There will be a link to everything that I talk about in the description down below. Uh, so I was reading an article on Worn and Wound and they said, uh, it's not really a big surprise that Apple was able to sell a technical item. Uh, and they actually made a really interesting analogy that was, you know, if, uh, if McDonald's decided to sell sushi, uh, undoubtedly they would be the largest seller of sushi in the world. Uh, but that doesn't mean that people who actually like sushi are going to buy sushi at McDonald's. So what does this mean in, in terms of the whole Apple thing uh, with the other watch manufacturers? Basically, what they were saying in their article is that the people who really like uh, mechanical watches and luxury timepieces uh, are actually going to stick with purchasing from Rolex and Omega and all the other brands that Apple surpassed in terms of revenue uh, because that's the watches that people actually really want. Um, and it's the, the type of watches that the community, the whole watch community, that isn't focused on fitness trackers wants. So that wraps it up for the first story of today. Let's move on to the second story. So the second piece of news for today is actually a video made by Theo and Harris. And this video is called How to Build Your Own Killer Watch Collection or something like that. There will be a link in the description as always. Um, but I really liked uh, this video. I really thought its message was really interesting and kind of what everybody should think about building their own collection. And basically the main takeaway from the video um, is that whatever watches you want, if you want to uh, you know, buy the same um, model of a watch but with different little varieties, you can go and do that. Um, or, you know, if you want to have some variety to your collection, you can do that. Uh, you know, it's not really for us, the people on YouTube, to judge uh, your individual collections just because, you know, you buy 10 SKXs with different modded dials or whatever. Um, but he does say that whatever you're doing to expand your collection, basically, whatever piece you're looking to acquire, become an expert on that piece, on that brand, uh, especially if you're putting a lot of money into it. And, you know, even if you're not putting a lot of money into it, I know, you know, a few hundred dollars to spend on a watch for me right now is a lot of money. <laughs> so I would definitely do my research. I am happy with my collection because I know myself and what I want. So when you are, you know, indulging in this luxury, do it intelligently. You know, don't just do it frivolously and like, you know, like a king and just buy shit. Uh, because you can and it's affordable on eBay. And my final note with collecting, once you do know yourself and what you really do enjoy and, and what, you're like to, what you want to get out of a collection, do your homework now on, on those genres. Um, but basically he just says, become an expert, do your research, and you know, rock your pieces in uh, everyday life 
and just have fun with it. I, you know, that's kind of a philosophy with watch collecting that I really, really like and I kind of subscribe to. So I really like the video and I wanted to give him a shout out. So let's move on to the next piece of news for today. All right, so for the third piece of news for today, we're actually going to be talking about a friend of mine, uh, which is actually kind of why I'm putting him on this show. Um, he just recently did a review of the Seiko Jajaro, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, SCED043. Now, who am I talking about? This is It's Kibble Talks Watches, or, you know, James from It's Kibble Talks Watches. There will be a link to his video in the description down below. But in this video, uh, he actually talks about the Jajaro, and personally, I am a really, really big fan of the design. Now, I've never owned one of these pieces, and I've been really, really tempted to buy one. The thing that turned me off about the piece, however, is that it's about $300, depending upon the condition and, you know, what color you, you get it in, uh, all that fancy stuff. Um, you know, again, for that same price, you could buy a, a used Saab 033. Uh, which is a mechanical watch and it's very very classy. I have one. I've, I've actually been wearing it most of the week. Um, but for the price, <laughs> James uh, said in his video that the watch feels pretty poorly made. He pointed out that the bracelet of the watch is uh, very very thin and it feels tinny, uh, <laughs> which is definitely not a good thing if you're spending hundreds of dollars on the watch. Another thing I want to talk about is this bracelet, and you can just see how that looks. It looks amazing, right? But it feels like utter crap. He also said that the kind of chronograph pusher guard kind of dug into the wrist if you wore it on the uh, left hand side, so he chose to wear it on the right. There we go, you can pretty much see it on my right wrist here. As you can imagine, on the left wrist, you've got to move it up quite a bit because of this extra bit, otherwise it pretty much just digs into your arm. Again, these are kind of um, kind of drawbacks. <laughs> Definitely puts the watch in the no buy zone for me. But again, you should totally check out his full review of the watch in the description down below. So let us move on to the fourth piece of news. All right, guys. So for the fourth piece of news for the week, we are going to be talking about a new video from Jay Anthony that came out this week. He made a video on how to spot a fake Rolex, and before even jumping into the video, he gave a very, very quick disclaimer, and it's actually something that I've been uh, guilty of doing. It's kind of a rumor in the watch industry that there's a definitive way to tell a real versus a fake Rolex, and I hate to be the person to do this to you, but I need to break that illusion because there isn't. The only way you can tell if a Rolex is legitimate is to become an expert on that model or take that watch to an expert. So uh, he says that you cannot tell just by a, a certain number of points uh, how to spot a fake Rolex. There are really good fakes. Um, and basically, if you really want to know the difference between a real and a fake Rolex, if you're ever trying to buy a Rolex or whatever, you should take it to someone who is an expert or you should <laughs> become an expert. So he goes on later in the video to compare what I would consider a pretty bad fake with a real uh, Rolex Submariner. And you can tell kind of just by looking overall um, at the details of both watches, you can tell which one is fake. And he does go more and more in detail in his video, so you should definitely go check that out. Um, but basically, if you're looking to buy a Rolex, everything should be 100% uh, pristine and very, very refined and very, very accurate. Um, so if, there, if there's anything that looks off, uh, definitely just if you're not sure and you think that it is legit and you really, really want to find out, take it to an expert. Um, but if, you, if you're buying or, and the person doesn't want you to take it to an expert or you feel rushed or for, that, for whatever reason, if something looks off, definitely do not buy it. Uh, again, as I've said before, when you're buying used, you are buying the seller. So again, you're basically trusting that the seller 
is going to give you a good watch, a, a quality watch, the, the real thing. So that pretty much wraps up the fourth news story for today. Let us move on. All right, guys, so for the fifth story of the week, uh, the Urban Gentry did an everyday carry video this week, and he actually showed off a few things that I'm kind of jealous of. He has a really, really cool knife. Uh, <laughs> I know that's kind of a thing. Like, I, I don't know why watches, knives, and guns, like, go together, but apparently that's a thing. I guess you could add wallets in there, too. Uh, which, you know, TGV has a, a pretty nice wallet in his video as well. I'm, again, I'm jealous. Um, but one of the things that I don't really understand <laughs> about everyday carry videos, um, my understanding of everyday carry is that you carry it every day. <laughs> and in TGV's video, I don't know why he did this, maybe to make it longer, maybe just to share more about himself with his subscribers, uh, which is actually an aspect of the video that I actually really enjoyed. Uh, you kind of got to know TGV a little bit better. Um, but he has like 20 or so, some like ridiculous number of items that he every day carries. So maybe I'm just not understanding it. <laughs> uh, it might be like everything that you use uh, that's like practical, um, that has some practical purpose in your life. I don't know. You guys should let me know in the comments down below if TGV did it right. I may do one of these videos in the future, so if you do want to see my everyday carry, uh, let me know what an everyday carry really is down in the description, and uh, let me know if you would like to see it. So finally, let's move on to the last story of the week, and let's wrap this show up. All right, guys, so for the last piece of news for today, it's not really much uh, news, but I do want to make a shout out to Mavs Dad Reviews Watches. Uh, they make some really, really quality content and they do get their hands on some more expensive pieces. Uh, they just put out a review for the Victory Knox uh, Airboss Mach 9. Yikes, <laughs> I believe it was. There will be a link to that video down in the description as well. But for my viewers who are looking for um, maybe some more expensive uh, watches or some watches that I haven't yet reviewed on the channel, I would urge you to go check out Mavs Dad Reviews Watches. He's a pretty cool guy and uh, he's very knowledgeable when it comes to his reviews, very thorough. Um, so, you know, if you don't necessarily want all of the nice purdy shots that I have in my reviews, uh, you can head over to his channel and just get the down and dirty details of the watches. So that pretty much wraps up the news for this week. Thank you for watching. My name is Josh, as always, and I will see you next week. Bye.